Monday, August 27th, 2013. Um, I hope everybody's been having a great summer. Uh, I will call the meeting to order. Uh, first on the agenda is the minutes of our June 25th meeting, which was our last meeting. Uh, any comments or on the minutes themselves? If there are none, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six, four, no, none against, one abstention. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, is there any old business that we need to attend to? I guess technically the Kellys qualify as old business, but it's really new business. So, so with uh, we'll proceed right to the n new business and the uh, request of uh, Cole and Margie Kelly of Nine Overlook Lane, Map U12, Lot 43, for a variance to construct an addition to their single-family dwelling. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Um, before we get oh, started. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. I'm going to recuse myself from this, um, from hearing this application. I am um, a direct abutter to the application, and I plan to testify in support. So I'm going to go. Okay. Uh, and I, I guess, in the interest of full disclosure, will, and I'll put this to the board, um, uh, uh, Mr. Kelly and I belong to the Perputa Club. Um, uh, here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, we've never played a golf match together, but uh, I did want to at least make that, make everyone aware of that. If you feel I should recuse myself, I'm happy to do that. We have a quorum, I think, either way. So I guess. I'd say, uh, my opinion, common membership in a club wouldn't rise to the level of needing to recuse yourself. You just don't want to chair the. <laughs> is it that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> that is obvious. Okay. All right. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Anyone? Everyone's fine with it? Okay. Then I'll just continue to chair the meeting then. Um, Mr. Cooper. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, m uh, members of the board. Oh, no. um, thank you for hearing us this evening. And we have enjoyed the summer, but it's good to be here. So you have, you have before you, I believe, a package. Um, that, we, that we put together for you, uh, starting with our, our ZBA application. And I just want to go through, through that package with you. I believe we're going to probably address these uh, questions about this package uh, probably a few moments later, or I can go over them now, whichever you think is correct. Why don't you give us an overview of what, what it is you're looking sure. to do. And again, I'm sorry, I didn't. My name's Craig Cooper, for those of you who don't know me. I own Rainbow Construction. I'm here representing the Kellys. We have Marjorie Kelly with us this evening. Cole Kelly is not here this evening. Uh, the Kellys have owned this property. This property's been in the family for 36 years. Uh, it, was a, it was substantially remodeled 16 years ago, basically within the same footprint. It had always been the, the family cabin so to speak, and they put it back together just as it was, actually. And the pictures are pretty amazing of what it looked like before and what it did on a full foundation 16 years ago. They've been using it as a summer home primarily up until recently and now decided to live here in Maine year-round. And uh, due to health reasons for uh, Mr. Kelly, as well as their own um, convenience and making it a year-round home, they'd like to have a first-floor master bedroom. We spent quite a bit of time with designers and trying to come up with a plan that would accommodate that first floor master bedroom and their ideas uh, for what they'd, how they'd like to expand. And that is why we were before you this evening. With the present setbacks of 25 feet uh, zoning for that area, uh, we're coming before you to request uh, variance to 14 feet. Um, so as per the requirements for our zoning application. Um, Marjorie did a lot of this work and did a great job. She went around the neighborhood. You should have a map of the, that shows kind of the, the surrounding neighbors with the Kelly in the middle. And um, 
all of the neighbors around there, and we went to the 10 closest homes, as required, and took measurements for setbacks for your consideration. And we have pictures of those, which I'll go over and speak of a little bit as well. Also in your package, you have photographs of the home itself, because the lay of the land, so to speak, and the steepness of the terrain are part of the reason that we're hoping to get this setback so that we could build where it made sense to, to build. And there are several photographs showing you the extreme drop off of the property as it goes towards the back. You then also have a series of pictures, one of each neighbor, which we have showing setbacks that range from five feet 14 feet, 1.5 feet, 10 feet, 5 inches, 1 foot, and there are flags in many of these photographs showing exactly where that is, 7 feet, 20 feet, 23 and a half feet, and 0 inches. One property built right on the property line. Note that all 10 of these abutting neighbors, none of them meet the 25 foot setback uh, that zoning is requiring. Also, you have six letters from all six abutting neighbors, one of whom is your fellow board member. And all six of those letters are in support of our request this evening. In the package, we've also given you our preliminary plans, drawings with an overview of the existing building and the master bedroom L that would bring us within the 14-foot side setback. We will be able to maintain the 25-foot front setback and all other setback, setbacks. It's only on that one side that they re we are requesting the 14-foot setback. There's also a first floor plan and a simple elevation for you to view. In addition to that, in your packet, you should have the survey, the survey map showing, showing the immediate six or eight lots with the Kellys, with the houses on lot number 130 on this full-size map. And the last item in your packet is from the town records of basically Trendy Point, or all of the approximately, it must be close to 100 lots on this map, showing all the small and the size of what we would consider or what would be called non-conforming lots today, from basically the entire neighborhood. As I mentioned before, some of the things I'd like to note, one of the things that I know is a requirement that I believe is that at least 50% of the abutting neighbors, when you look at 10 neighbors, are supposed to be in similar compliance within what we're looking at here. In fact, all 10 of these neighbors do not meet the 25-foot setback. The average setback, when you take all 10 into account, is 8 foot 3 inches. We're requesting 14. Two of the 10 have more than 14. One is 14, which leaves seven less than that, or 70% of the neighbors have even less setback than we're requesting at 14 feet. The average setback for that 70% is three, three and a half feet, which is kind of interesting as well. That's an overview, and I'd be happy to take questions and then answer or address the questions on the form as you'd like. Great. Th thank you. Uh, I think it's a, a very well put together package. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of thanks to Mrs. Kelly for that as well. Uh, questions by the board? Yes, Barry. Could you have gotten your expansion by going in the back? Not financially feasible as the pictures show you of the house. They, the, 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 the ground drops off precipitously and there are, you have photographs of showing that it's, it's a daylight basement right out the back and then it falls away dramatically, and one side is actually a huge valley, per se. More expensive, that's all? 
It's more expensive. It's not the area, the, the, that front of the house would not be where you typically would build a master bedroom wing as well. Um, it, would take, it would be a three-story addition to be able to have a first floor master bedroom out there. I'd just like to uh, repeat the comments from the chair that uh, I greatly appreciated the thoroughness of the packet and the photos of the adjacent properties. Thank you. Um, will will this uh, will the addition be blocking um, any views um, or casting any shadows that uh, on any on either of the abutters? None that we're aware of. No. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Um, I'll, I'll close the, I guess, the, the presentation portion of the uh, the meeting and ask if there's any um, public comment on the uh, on the application. Good evening. I'm Joanna Taranjo. I am a direct abutter to the project. I am immediately across a um, private right of way from the project and pro I'm probably the, my home is probably the residence with the most impact, if any, from the project. The other, the I would guess the only other home that can see the proposed project from their houses, the Madigans and their seasonal occupants. Um, we will only be able to see it from a few of our dining room windows. The um, impact is truly minimal. Um, and I am confident that this project is consistent with the character of the neighborhood and meets all of the um, variant standards in the ordinance. The, as to the feasibility of constructing on the back of the property, I don't know that the pictures do it justice, but having been into the Kelly's garage recently, you can't help but notice when you come out that it is a dramatic drop away in the back. I mean, it verges on a cliff dropping away back there. Um, so in order to construct, I mean, you'd almost have to build piers or pilings or something in order to, it would almost be on the third story just to be level with the front. Um, so it really is truly a dramatic height difference in the back. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other um, comments? Okay. Seeing or hearing none, I'll close uh, the public comment portion of the um, application uh, and open it up to uh, to the board. Don't all jump in at once. I, I have I have no comments. I mean, I'll, I'll reiterate what you guys have already said. I mean, the packet speaks for itself. It was done very well. And I certainly have nothing to add at this time. I would agree the packet's quite thorough. The photos are very helpful and makes it a somewhat easy decision on my part. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I also, I think, the, I think the package does a nice job explaining that, that most, uh, well, I think uh, Mr. Cooper said over probably 70 percent of the um, the uh, neighbors have some form of um, uh, their setback is, is less than is called for in the in the ordinance, and so it certainly seems to be consistent from that perspective with other homes in the area. And uh, it does seem to put the um, to put this master bedroom in, uh, in or addition in some place other than where it's being situated would create a. Uh, um, you know, undue financial hardship on on the Kellys. Although I, I would like to actually see how you would have done that to put it on the other side of the cliff. That would be kind of interesting. <laughs> um, 
So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm supportive of, of the variance. Um, Does somebody want to make a motion since we're tongue tied? I'll, I'll move to approve the variance request. Second. To get the first and the second. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the uh, the uh, request for a variance? Uh, raise your hand. Say aye. Any opposed? So that is one, two, three, four, five, zero in favor of the uh, the variance. Six. Okay. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Six. Sorry. Math was never a strong suit. Um, okay. Uh, so I think we should probably just go through the um, finding of facts. Um, so uh, the variance request, um, this is a variance request of, uh, for uh, MAP U12, Lot 43, Nine Overlook Lane, applicants Carl, Cole and Margie Kelly. Uh, Cole and Margie Kelly, the owners of record of MAP U12, Lot 43, Nine Overlook Lane. Nine Overlook Lane is a non-conforming lot in the RA district. The required setback, setbacks are 25 feet in the front, 25 on the side, and 20 feet on the rear. In order to construct an addition on the side of the house, the applicant is requesting a variance that allows a side setback of 14 feet on the easterly side of the property. Um, and then an additional conclusion, uh, there's no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would, would cause a practical difficulty um, as defined by uh, section 4353-4C. Um, could we take a vote on the finding of facts? Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? So that's 6-0 on the finding of facts. I think we covered everything there. So, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Sorry for the delay with our schedules, but no good luck. Thank you. Okay. Yep. thank you. on our agenda is to hear the request of Timothy Gosh of 1267 Sawyer Road, map R5, lot 55, for a home business conditional use permit to operate a repair garage. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, as you probably most of you remember, I don't think everyone was here in the June meeting, but uh, I like to, I've been a Cape Elizabeth resident since 1978, graduated from high school, from first right to high school. Uh, my first job was in Cape Elizabeth working on Sonny Young's farm off of Sawyer Road. Second job was in by the sea. Uh, that's where I learned I kind of had a niche to fix cars, especially when you're a 15 year old and you have a 1971 Chevelle. I've been past the high school now though, these kids drive some pretty nice cars now compared to what I remember. But when my friends learned I could fix cars, my, my father had a nice sized garage built so he could fix his, uh, uh, his semi truck. So the door dimensions, everything was basically set up to fix things. And uh, a friend of mine told me that Jonesy's had a job opening back in 1980, end of 87, beginning of 88. I said, well, if I have a niche for working on cars, what better place in town than Jonesy's service center? 
there, I worked there until the place closed, I think, end of 2007, officially stopped pumping gas, beginning of 2008, uh, when they became a convenience store. And uh, because of the boss and stuff, we were allowed to bring some stuff home and work on it if people cannot afford Jonesy's rates. Uh, that's one thing I'll say about Greg. He was very, very good man, and he knew that people had to have their car fixed, even if it wasn't financially feasible. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to be able to bring some cars home. And in that case, I got a small customer base where after they closed, I could still repair cars. They still called me up. Like most things, it started off slow, but word of mouth uh, worked out pretty well. And for the most part, I uh, stay somewhat busy. No, I don't work every day. Uh, I do, because of physical limit limitations, I am, my options are limited uh, to work elsewhere. I figure my second, my second choice was gonna sell art down at Fort Williams Park, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. That was a joke, by the way. <laughs> I went over well. And so I would love to be able to keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, I guess I'm very clean to the environment because I don't want people to think that I rent the property. It is where I live. It is where my animals hang out. I have a couple garage cats. So even inside, everything is impeccable. So they don't, so I, uh, I try to keep my noise down. Uh, at one point in time, my neighbor, I think, was getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. So if I ever did have to even hit a hammer, I would make sure the doors were closed right up even on a warm summer night just to respect the neighborhood because they are my neighbors and I have respect for every single one of them and the last thing I want to do is upset any of the, uh, of any of the neighbors. And so I'm hoping I can continue what I'm doing and I appreciate your consideration. I can't remember from the last time when you were here. When did you start? I officially started turning wrenches for compensation in the end of 87, beginning of 88. Uh, it was very limited then, though. I don't want to think that it was as busy as it is now. I might have done a couple cars and a month. You, were, you, had, you, had so, you had said before, you would started working at Jonesy's, but then you were still doing your stuff through your, on the side through your house? Correct. Well, I started, I, when I say I was working on cars, I'm thinking like Fixer Friends Headlight. This is back in high school, before I even started. I'm talking about for money. Okay. When you start doing it for I started doing it for money once again, roughly when I got my driver's license in end of 87, beginning of 88. But money was $5 from a friend. And it, when did you start doing the, the state? State inspection started in 2011, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, have it says. <laughs> yes, I knew I was going to. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to. I'm going to assume you've at least made your formal presentation, and so you're ready to take some questions from. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I do have. I don't know when public is coming. I do have some neighbors here uh, who like well, to speak. We're going to get to them. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm ready for some questions. Okay, um, let me just ask. I have, yeah. I have a, a few, uh, and I just want to make sure I'm reading the application right. Okay. Um, uh, specifically, state the home business use proposed. Is that light car repair? I can't make out the first word, that's why I'm asking. I would call it light, yes, it is light car repair. Okay. That's what I needed to know, okay. Um, and I don't see it in the application, but what is the current average daily traffic um, on the street? A car or two a day? No, no, give me the Sawyer Road. Oh, the, the Sawyer Road. It's a very, it's a 40 mile an hour zone. It's a cut from South it's Portland. It's a V. It, it, it's a relatively heavy travel road. Okay. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. During during the nine to five rush hour, we have heavy commuter traffic, and, and drive past the house. Uh, do we have any? Uh, this is a question, I guess, Ben, for you. I mean, it, it's it's relative to assessing the impact of a home business. You have to kind of set what the average daily traffic is before you can determine what the impact is of your business. So we're trying to assess what the incremental volume is going to be. And yes. So if we don't have a baseline, I can say uh, it would it would not. No one would know anyone. You could drive another 50 cars down that road, and no one would be none the wiser. 
it's a very busy, heavily road. Chair, could we take notice of, uh, um, we don't have uh, judicial notice, but for our purpose, we're all aware of that uh, busyness, that road, mm -hmm. and the likely impact on this home or business may be a nominal, or a nominal increase. My suggestion is that um, that may not, may, may be a uh, requirement that has not been determined. And I'd also note that that number goes into a formula that takes into account the next provision, which if it's less than 10, tri 10 trips a day, it's going to be sufficient. And if it is indeed six, then the actual volume on the road becomes irrelevant. So okay. Fair, 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 com fair comments. Okay. Um, Barry, yeah. yeah, sure. This is <clears throat> kind of a difficult case for us. I think that uh, a lot of it's based upon whether or not this is the home business. I think it's pretty obvious, at least to me, I'm not an attorney, it's not a home business. We had a wine merchant that tried to put a wine business in a residential. Right. Barry, right now we're just doing Q&A. Oh, we can I talk? Well, well if, you have a, if, you have a, if you have a question for the applicant, you can talk. Okay. We're going to get to, we're going to get to your, how you feel about it l later in the program. Oh, we're on Q and A. Right now it's Q and A. So if you have a, if you have a question, by all means. Okay, I'll think of a question. Okay. If, go on while you're thinking about it, I'll ask some more. <laughs> um, uh, how many state inspections would you say you do a month? I'm going to say I roughly buy, I'm, this, I'm, this is, I go buy how many I buy. Every six months, I usually buy about 60 stickers. How many? 60. Six zero? Yes. Okay. Ten a month, roughly? Roughly. Once again, I might do 20 one week and then not do any for another three weeks. But I average, I buy stickers from the state twice a year, okay. usually 60 in a, in a per batch. What's, is that under your, is that pulled under your name or do you have a, are you just doing business as you or, or is there like a... No, it's officially called Gray Barn Garage, but I don't have a Gray Barn Garage. It's a Gray Barn. That's how I came up with the name. <laughs> People still stop and go, "Is this? Am I in the right spot?" And um, it's a big Gray Barn. I'm like, "Yeah, you found you found it." <laughs> uh, and how about as far as um, uh, repairs that you do on a monthly basis? How many would you say? I usually work maybe 15 to 17 days a month, four hours a day. So maybe four or five cars a week, some weeks and other weeks, maybe 10. Could, could you describe what light car repair is? Like what, what yeah, I do mostly with obviously state inspections and that's putting on windshield wipers, helping out with directionals. Uh, I do some brake work. Uh, some oil changes, if they, I try not to do oil changes, but sometimes you have to. Uh, alternator, starters, where I don't take out an engine, I don't do even what they call timing belts, because that's just too much work, and once again, physically I'm limited. Uh, I just said I don't do transmissions, I don't change rear, you know you drive by those garages, you see all sorts of big car parts out there. Nothing, if I can't pick it up with one hand, it doesn't get worked on in my car. And what about the use of like loud power tools? I know just, you know. People uh, they're actually not that loud. I do use an air tool on occasion. Uh, but for the most part, I've had no complaints of noise. Uh, and if I do feel as if I am going to make more noise, then I do close the doors or I just hold off until the next day. Uh, because once again, volume is not. Well, I don't worry about, oh my God, I have to get this done tonight. If it's something I feel as if it's getting too late to work on, I'll just wait till uh, tomorrow. So is there, a, is there a time period that you work during each day or it can vary? <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say I start my day early, like around 1030, and I finish up around, I finish up around four. <laughs> I generally don't like to, uh, I know that saying, the early bird gets the worm. I'd be a lot thinner if that was. Uh, <laughs> so but, the hours of operation are roughly? 10 to 4. 10 to 4, 10 to 5. But that's not every day. That's like 15 to 17. Ex if you, if you, yes, it's, I guess it's, I work when I'm, I work. And I'm, uh, I have a sign, actually, that says, it's kind of jokingly says, 
I should be here at noon. If I'm not, I'll be somewhere else. Yeah, right. If someone calls me up and says my car's not doing something right, I'm like, yeah, can you swing by at 10.30 tomorrow? Uh, very rarely do I ever start any earlier than that. Very rarely do I ever wake up any earlier than that. Uh, so I, I don't start first thing, and usually I'm, I'm finished up by 4 or 5 o'clock. Um, okay, and, and you would, uh, I guess I want to go back to kind of the nature of kind of the definition of, of light uh, car repair, and you had mentioned earlier you try not to do um, any oil changes, but, you know, relative to disposable wastes um, and, you know, for lack of a better term, pollutants, what are you, are you doing? Uh, the oil actually gets recycled at a garage down in South Portland. I put the oil, once again, I have animals and stuff, I'm very careful, and I hate oil on the floor, that I can tell you. Uh, I put it in five-gallon buckets, and when that five-gallon bucket gets full, it goes down and gets used at a local garage down on Broadway, and that's what they use to heat their, uh, heat their garage with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how about, like, uh, do you change out uh, antifreeze? Uh, very rarely. Uh, I only do it when somebody, usually when cars come in, it's because they're leaking something. So at this point in time, there's nothing left. Uh, and if I do, I have several devices that catch 99, if not 100 percent, of uh, of any uh, any uh, fluids. This may be a slightly unfair question. It's not meant to be, but okay. No, I'm um, if, if you were to put a percent on, well, let me go back to something. If you're doing, uh, let's say, eight repairs a week, okay, which I think is the rough. That that probably be with. somewhat average, maybe a little on the high side, but about that. Okay, so of the eight eight car repairs that you do a week. How many would involve some handling of hazardous materials, whether it be oil or some fluid, if you will? On average, maybe one of those cars, maybe. Can I ask a couple of follow-up questions on that, too? Um, when you have the cars at your shop, how many do you have there at a time, usually? Uh, usually, I'm going to say, uh, depends on the time of year and the people. Sometimes people are, are I'm going to say two to three cars sometimes. At the most? But at the, and once again, I can't, some people, their cars break down and next thing I know, there's, I wake up in the morning and there's another car out there because once again, they start the day at 7.30. So you so, have at most two or three cars on your... At, for an average, correct. And where correct. would they be stored when they're there? They're right in the driveway. If you saw, have you ever been past the house? Do you know where we are at all? I, I don't know where you are on... I'm at the end of Wells Road. Okay. Uh, the yep. I have one of those driveways that I can fit 12 cars and yep. no, one, no one gets blocked in. And it's all paved? It is dirt. And is it, is it curbed around the driveway or where does runoff from it go? Uh, runoff from the garage? The, you mean from the building or from the, because nothing from the inside ever leaves. From the driveway? From the driveway. I'm, I still don't, you mean the water? Yeah. It runs off onto my property, no one okay. else's. Uh, uh, and how much, how big is your lot? The lot itself is a whole lot, about what, five and a half acres? Six acres. Six acres. And, how, and where is your driveway situated in relation to your property? Is it kind of in the middle? Is it on the side? We have two driveways. Uh, one, the garage, the the house Just is in the, the one where the cars would be parked. The cars would be parked roughly right in front of the garage. So kind of right in the middle of your property, so there's a good buffer area from any other properties? Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty of buffer area. It's, like I said, our closest neighbor on our left and right, you, you can hardly see them. And uh, then for cars that are in your garage, what's the surface of the garage? Is it concrete? or? It's just concrete. Are there floor drains? No, that is it. Uh, they stopped floor drains years ago. <laughs> There's plenty of them out there. I know, I know, but I've, I was always, fortunately I've always worked at places I was responsible, and when they said plug them up, we plugged them up, which we all kind of didn't like because we love washing our cars there, but uh, no, there are no drains. In the, and do you do, that was my next question, do you do car washing for folks when they come to pick them up, or do you just give them back the way you got them? I generally give them back, unless I, unless sometimes I vacuum them. Uh, I don't, but no, you're not doing car washing no, and running no, off. No, I, I have not that it matters. I have dabbled with giving like maybe a free car wash coupon because <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like washing my own car, so I'm not going to wash someone else's. <laughs> Those were all of my questions. Okay. I had a couple questions. Sure. 1955C, um, uh, which is the requirements for an application for conditional use. Um, 
uh, permit. Some of the questions that you're hearing now, I think, go to what's supposed to be in the packet that's... My father kind of was in charge of that. I'm, once again, I am embarrassed to say I wasn't as involved as I should have been. I was too busy sleeping or spending a few hours in the garage, uh, so I apologize. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to say on that. So uh, I, I would just mention that we're supposed to have a scale drawing showing where the buildings and the natural features and the driveways and the different uh, I, questions. It, This is kind of my first time doing this sort of thing, so um, I really Completely understand. I kind of want that, that carpenter back. He seems like he had a really good packet. I kind of want that packet. <laughs> <laughs> The, the other aspects of the application we're supposed to have are the exact hours of operation in what's, yeah, what's exact is tough to say because so, in the reason we're supposed to have all of that so that we have it all bundled in a packet so we can assess and then hold you to all of those restrictions. right right I kind of now I kind of really wish I did more homework uh, but once again it, my shop with fixed hours is I could say I never work very very late I know you can hold me to it, but it's kind of, I'm in the garage when I'm in the garage, and it is like 10 to 4.30, 10 to 5 o'clock, at that point in time, it's time to call it a night. Um, ben, did we, uh, I, I note somewhere in the, uh, in the uh, application submission that we're, uh, that when we get something like this, we notify the DEP as well. Have we gotten any comments back? one way or the other? We did not notify the DEP for this. We're, oh. we're only required to notify the DEP if it's a variance to the shoreland regulations. Okay. John? Yes, sir. If I go back and ask a few questions. Of course. Gray Bun is the name of your operating company? Correct. It's just a name I kind of came up with to put on a business card. And your licenses that you have are in the name of Gray Bun? Correct. And Correct. File taxes on the great I have not. Uh, I have not. Uh, I don't have any sales tax ID. You have no sales tax. Either. I do not. Have, I don't do enough volume uh, to qualify. So okay. So you file your income from Grapevine under your personal taxes. Uh, right now, we haven't made enough money yet. What does that mean? I have only made a couple thousand dollars a year, and my accountant said that falls under the personal exemption. Interesting. You mean over all these years? How many years have you been in business? Oh, but. Officially full time now, only since 2008. Okay, thank you. Um, Chair, I have a follow up question. Uh, yes. Are you insured? Uh, uh, no. The business that you're talking about, you're doing a business as. That's the answer to my colleague's question. Is that well, I, really, I, I just haven't felt like the volume is quite there yet. It's still like coming to me is like, almost like having your neighbor fix a car. Yeah. And yes, yeah, someday I, I have been looking into that stuff because at this point in time, word of mouth has been doing good. But right now, that's why I haven't even got a sales tax ID yet because I don't buy that kind of volume. Um, on, uh, on my... Google Maps yeah. here. I'm just looking at the, the driveway here. Is, is your house the one with the, the dirt driveway or is the gravel? That, is, is that a house right there? That is my house right there. Is and that is my driveway and that's a driveway. Right. Where, if the cars have to go inside a facility, it'd where be, do they drive into? They'd be right in there. Okay. And so there's no one on either side. It's just across the street. Correct. Okay. Thank you. In, in, Want me to show you the... Yeah, that's, that's pretty slick. You guys take a look at that. And uh, you may or may not know the answer to this, and the CEO might or might not know the answer to this. Um, one aspect of us not having a package with the map and whatnot is we can't 
clearly see where the buildings and the work is situated on the lot. Take, take, take a look at this thing. Uh, much of the lot. I want that in my packet. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Much of the lot is within the shoreland zoning. Um, are the buildings in the work, the area where you'll be doing the work within the shoreland zone, do you know? The I think it's what, 250 feet? The garage is, well, the garage was officially, I don't know that question. You should take a look at those maps. It's far from anything. There's the map that I was looking at this okay. one. I stick that notebook right into a packet. Look at the one in the back of the packet where the shoreland zone is actually marked off, which is mm -hmm. it actually curves in and covers almost all of the lot. The I suppose you can tell which one it is. I'm blind as a <laughs> If you look at the solid green on the left. Hold on, I've got to find Sawyer first. You know I'm directionally challenged, right? Is it right here? Can I have one more question? Yes. Uh, what are the requirements by the state of Maine to get a be able to do inspection stickers? Do you have inspection stickers? It's actually, yeah, I do inspection stickers, and it's really not. I could have your house doing it. If you have a garage, sir, with a concrete floor. Do you have a garage at your home yes. with a concrete floor? Right. I could have you do inspection stickers probably in a couple months. You don't have to have it special equipment. These two up here. Oh, it's handheld. Uh, you have to have. You have to have a tire pressure gauge, what? tire pressure gauge, a tread depth gauge, a ball joint micrometer, uh, a brake caliper to measure the thickness of like rotor. Uh, you do have to have a lift. So you, you did have to have a headlight aimer, so which set me back $1,000, and then they tell me a year later I no longer need it. So if you want to buy a headlight aimer, I'm, uh, uh, Anything for exhaust fumes? Nope. Blue? Nope. I, don't see I, do, I do, for my own personal use, have a hose that I can run outside, but for as far as exhaust, those fancy like things like that come from the wall, like you see at dealerships, they, those, that's not required. The, actually, the state inspector who came by actually thought my garage was quite well set up. Uh, <coughs> what do you charge for a sticker? $18. Does uh, anyone else have any questions from the board? I have one last question. Mm -hmm. um, how many times a year do you get inspected by the state um, for your... If you, if you really don't, it's like a lot of things, if you don't really have any complaints against you, uh, zero. Uh, Jason, I go to the state police meetings, which a lot of guys don't, and when they see us there, that, you know, we ask questions about regarding the law, and actually, it's funny you mentioned that one time, I asked you, when do you come and look at our shop? And he goes, well, you guys, excuse me, you guys come here to me, so I don't need to come to you. Uh, it was funny, they need to inspect the shop. Your license is good for two years. I called the state police and said, my license is expiring, can you come down and take a look at it? And they said, just keep doing what you're doing, and he'll show up someday. The state and their inspections are really, let's put it this way, their budget is not what it used to be. They actually had to, uh, we would actually send, when I run an inspection sticker, I put one on your car, and I send another copy to the state. They make us photocopy it now because they no longer, they're so behind up there, they can't keep track of the paperwork. So they're requiring us now to keep track of our paperwork. Uh, I guess a computer broke, and they, they don't want to replace it. It's kind of sad to say, but that's this, you know how things are in the state. But uh, nope, I've had no, no problems with the state police. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Well, look, looking at what's um, under the shell, what we're, we're required to have in order to make any consideration, um, we could step through all the criteria. It's just I know in the past we have not made exceptions for applications that don't have the information. And we right. have pulled applicants to go back and resubmit. So, so, so the question is, should we? Do we step through or? No. Uh, um, what does it lack? I don't. I, I, I agree with you because in the past, and I, and this has always been my position. It's always going to be my position. I, packet that has to be put together has certain criteria that we need to have and my position is I'm not here to, to do it for someone and if it's not here doesn't mean it's, 
denied. It just means the packet's incomplete. It needs to be done. It's just there's a bare minimum of what the application requirements are. If it's not here, it's not one thing. I mean, there's six things that Chris is indicating. I agree. I mean, most some of the bigger things just they're not there. It's With, within the confines of Section 15, uh, 1955C. Yes. Right. Yes. I agree. Uh, I agree. Um, what's specific? I'm so, sorry to interrupt. But what, what, what's missing specifically? Yeah. Well, Barry, you'd have to go look at 1955C. 19, explains exactly what's supposed to be in the package. A completed and signed application. Ben, which ones don't we have? So if you look at page 54 of our ordinance, section 1955C, that lays out a list of requirements, Barry, that we need to look at in order to make sure that an application is complete. And we need to have documentation for the record that each one of those criteria has been met. And, and I just note 1955C actually says that we can waive these requirements only upon written request of the applicant. And then also, we, need, shall, we have to find that such waves, waived information is not needed to determine conformance with the standards of approval. So as a general, my perspective of this statute is we don't really even have the ability to waive an app um, compliance with these. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's very clear that we need the information or... Oh, 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 I completely understand. I apologize. I'm just ignorant. I didn't know. Well, once again, I had no way. Pat, this is very mean. And I mean, okay. in the past, we've, we've had this uh, yes, we have. situations where... Given a little guidance, send them on, you know, send them away, and they come back next month. And we Beautiful. Try it. <laughs> but it'll, it'll just keep coming back. Shouldn't we hear it now? Because the, the points... We can't hear it now can't. because the information, we do not have the information we need to adequately assess the application. Okay, why didn't we tell them that last month? Sorry? <clears throat> Excuse me, but why didn't we tell them that last month? We just got the application today. Last month was the same garage, but it was uh, a different issue. It wasn't an application for conditional use. So I guess um, perhaps at the last meeting, we could have said, look at 1955C, look at the requirements, put together a package with all that information. But that's technically we, not our job of uh, giving guidance and advice. I might suggest this. Um, it, it, again, we're, we're kind of citing a couple pages in the ordinance, the sections. Uh, uh, the, the town has a CEO for a lot of reasons, one of which is, uh, I don't know if I'm inadvertently doing this to you or not, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> one, of which, one of which is to serve as a resource for, for prospective uh, applicants to, to the town, um, you know, to the ZBA. And so I, I would encourage you to, to sit down with Ben and, and um, with your application and, and have him work through the things yeah. we need to properly evaluate the, the application. Exactly, exactly. So I, I, the only thing I would say is, I'm, I'm sorry it took, kind of took us 30 minutes to, to get to this point, but, but I think that um, you know, uh, Chris and Jeffrey are, are, are right. I think that we've been trying to ask questions to kind of address some of the areas. Oh, I completely understand. And so I completely rather understand. Rather than continue to kind of uh, um, go on a fishing expedition, I, I right. think. Um, I think where the, the board is at is um, that, um, you know, I might suggest that, that you um, with, withdraw the application and, and uh, resubmit it um, uh, uh, for, at our next ZBA meeting. Okay. Before uh, you do that, I'd like to make one more comment, which is that in addition to the requirements that are specifically listed here, I'd be, I would love to have a matchup of your map with the town zoning map so that it's clear what the zoning is that's applicable to the parcel so that it is clear whether your use is or is not in the shoreland zone. Okay. Because I would like for that to be really clear to, based on the papers in front of me. Other. Is way off. Which I totally understand it may be, so. Which I don't. And he, Peter says, well, I think you do. 
That's a bigger problem. <laughs> I don't know. If you can show that with pictures or something that match up with the plan so that we just, it just needs could, to be uh, clear on the face of the papers that you're not in the shoreland zone. And specifically the, um, the buildings at issue, are they in or not in the shoreland zone? The area of the work's going to be done, is it in okay. or not in the shoreland zone? Okay. Uh, I know probably because of the no packet stuff, it's really meant a lot to me that my neighbors have come up here. They can't speak now and keep it in your memory to the next time I reapply, can they? Because they've come up here twice already. I hate to keep at let me, let me suggest this, that perhaps they, they email the CEO. Oh, okay. I, I, that would work. Just, just, <coughs> okay. Just like All right. a comment. I pre okay. Or, or send a letter if they don't have email. I mean, that, that, that way it stays fresh. I get that, and I'm, I'm sorry to, you know. No, no, I, I, just, I just hate I hate having someone come up here on a Tuesday night, and, and especially to help me out, which... Sure. I understand. Uh, they've done more than enough as it is, so. Agreed. Uh, so I guess we would basically go talk to Ben, get a 1955C, <laughs> and reapply with a nice, you know, I really should get that, that guy, that, <laughs> that, that packet was really good, wasn't it? Like how easy he flowed by. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry I wasted your time. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, but I will be back in this time. So do I officially w withdraw. withdraw my thing? Okay, and then. Do I have to pay $150 again? Wait. If I withdraw it, do I still have to pay to do we do it again? Yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <CEO. laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Do I cut off the three minute recess? So, we can I consider this? Can I, is it officially withdrawn right now? Yes. I, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd rather have two minutes. Please. Two minute break for me. You want to talk to Ben? Okay. Uh, uh, we're just going to take a quick uh, uh, three minute recess. Uh, thank you. Okay, we're back from our recess. Um, next on our agenda is to hear the request of Wayne Brooking of 208 Two Light Road, map U15, lot 18, for an approval to expand his house 80 square feet in a non conforming area uh, per section 1943 B3 of the zoning ordinance. No, I was going to have to. Mr. Brooking, I assume. I was going to have right. to. Right, that's who it is. Actually, uh, just a, as, a, as a thing, I thought. I thought you were um, your son. Oh no, uh, he, that's another Wayne Brooking. Yes. There is a, and there's still another one beyond that. Number three. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. He isn't very. I, I don't have. I don't have anything then. No, I'm. I I'm the. I'm summer, the elder. I coach summer baseball with your. With your. Yeah. With the I'm, other I'm the elder. So. So. Um, my. Uh, my project is a pretty small room, uh, eight by ten, uh, eighty square feet, and uh, the purpose of that is to put a uh, oil-fired boiler in it. I, I presently have propane heat. Uh, I haven't had it very long, but I've had it too long. <laughs> so uh, that's my intention, as to replace it with a uh, part of it with with an oil burner. Uh, I'm I'm about I'm the last house down on two lights right on the left hand side, and uh, I, my plan. Well, I think you can see from the, uh, whoops, that's the wrong half. This plan, I'm 15 feet from uh, the sideline. My intention is to extend it, as you'll see on some of the other uh, drawings I have here. This is this probably is good sitting. Is to extend that eight by ten. So, I'm I'm 15 feet from the Coast Guard. Uh, I'm not going to be any closer. Uh, I'm probably, and in back, I'm probably, uh, geez, I didn't measure it. It's, it's well over 100 feet behind me. And uh, the sides would be 29 and a half feet from the customer, from the uh, neighbor. I have some, uh, some photographs. These, these are not yesterday's photographs, but they're still the same. Uh, I'm at 208, and this is my neighbor at 206. Uh, 204 is the next one, and then 202. They're all 50-foot uh, frontage lots. The house is over 100 feet, 100 years old. Um, no basement. Ledge. It's just like digging a hole out on the end of the point. <laughs> I've been under there, and I, I have a, I've hollowed out a little space, and it's enough for a, for a propane boiler, but not big enough for an oil boiler. So that's, that's a reason I need, need the... Uh, extension. Thank you. Questions? How will it be vented? Pardon me? How will the boiler be vented? Vented? Uh, uh, power venter. Yep. Which way will, which side will it blow out? I'm not sure. Uh, I, I probably will go uh, straight back. Towards the back. So towards the back. Yeah, the I, I wouldn't want to be too close to the windows. Yeah, the for sure. Side. I've had that at my yeah. house. I have a power venter on. I, I have another building across the street from me, and there's a power venter on the oil burner there. And uh, the, the people that maintain the burners hate them, but uh, I, I haven't had any problems with it. It's been there several years. Are uh, uh, most of your, uh, uh, well, I guess, are, are your buddy neighbors all kind of within the setback as well? Same, same sort of situation, yeah. Okay. I mean, They're it, all. It looks close from the front. Oh, yeah. I guess can't They're probably, uh, well, they, see, they have a garage. The one, my next door neighbor has a garage. And that garage is probably, I don't know, two feet, uh, if, that, if that, from that side. And I don't have a garage, so uh, that makes, makes me uh, in a little better shape probably right now. They all look pretty similar, if not actually all worse if you count the garage in terms of side setback from your house. Right. And just, uh, I guess, on the, just so I'm clear on the application. So on the proposed side, you've got um, 
3.6 and, and 15, and then in parentheses 29.6 for the addition. Yeah. What, just what is that? Well, that's that's if you take the 30, uh, the, the back side of my house is 34 feet, right? And if you took off eight feet of that, that would leave you what 20, uh, 26, and I add that three foot setback to it, it gets the 29. Got it. Any other questions? Um, I, I, uh, I guess before we just get to the public comment section, although it's somewhat related, um, uh, did any neighbors write to you uh, one way or the other as to whether they're for no, or against? No, I haven't heard. I, I've had some positive comments from yeah. neighbors. Okay, but nothing. Uh, but nothing, no, no negatives. We haven't received anything. I assume we're heavily. No, I, I received one phone call and uh, subsequent email just asking for clarification on the application, but didn't express an opinion one way or the other. Okay. okay. Sure. Um, just so I'm understanding this map correctly, so the lot ranges from 51 to 55 feet wide? Yes. It's 51 in the front. It might be a little wider in the back, 52 or 3, but it's a, it's a, it's a pretty narrow, and, and it's 200 and some odd feet deep, so. And so a, the, the side setbacks in the RA district are supposed to be 25 feet on each side, so. Yeah. So and I, I got to come if I want to drive a nail, I got to come up here and ask if it's okay, right? So, <laughs> so you have about a one foot area that you can build in. <laughs> oh, I get one foot. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Brook. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, do we have any um, public comments on the application? Okay, no, seeing no public comment, I will close the public comment section of the program uh, and turn it over to the board. Thoughts, comments? Just a comment. I find that the application is considerably restrained uh, with an opportunity to make a monster size extension. Is this looking right over the field, right over the boat? And that's not apparently the intent. And it's merely to put housing over a unit to provide heating to the home, um, which is kind of utilitarian. <clears throat> yes. Um, so I, I'm struck that this is fairly straightforward for me. Um, This application appears pretty complete to me. We've got pictures, and it appears certainly that the setbacks, it would be impossible to comply with, and the house certainly predates <laughs> the setback requirements, and the proposed addition is, has setbacks that are less than the accessory structures on all of the picture lots, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. So I have no problems with the application. Anyone else care to chime in? I, I would, I, the fact that it's a 50 odd foot wide lot such that any addition, any additional uh, addition to the building in order to provide a change in the heating system requires this. For me, that is a, uh, a decision point that I'm looking at. Uh, just a question, do we want to add a conclusion that the addition is for the housing of a boiler, as opposed to it's an eight by 10 addition. It doesn't matter to me what the use is. I mean, to me, it's compliant with the requirements of the ordinance, regardless of what the use is. For, for me, that type of restriction seems appealing because one aspect of this that I am slightly concerned with projects like this is um, creep where slowly additions are added on over the years, then you end up with a situation where you have a significant amount of coverage on the lots when there was no intent to allow that to occur under the ordinance. And we're granting um, 
equivalent of variances, we're, we're, we're finding that we're permitting these uh, additions because of the fact that they're small little additions, but if there's no restriction on what it's used for over time, it could slowly just turn into a larger and larger house. I don't know how the rest of you feel. It seems to me that the question that we're addressing when we issue a variance is whether it complies with the, with the ordinance requirements. And here it does, regardless of the proposed use. The proposed use has nothing to do with it. It's the size and the closeness in comparison to the other structures in the neighborhood and the need for it given the 50 foot width of the property, which means that it's impossible to comply with the setback. So to me, this, the proposed use, while it does certainly show a lot of restraint, I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised to see it go all the way across the back of the house, but um, it, I, I don't, and aside from the fact that it's, unnecessary for us to put a use restriction on the enforceability of use restrictions is pretty non-existent. <laughs> Unless Ben wants to go knock on everyone's doors every couple of years <laughs> to find out what they're using their structures for. And we ran into a restriction, um, I won't comment on that, uh, prior issue before us. But I, I would note that the application is technically uh, entitled a reconstruction and that's how it's being shoehorned under the statute. And putting an addition on, calling that a reconstruction is a little iffy, but it, we, we're only allowed to grant this under a reconstruction or replacement of the building. If you look at 1943B3. What page is that on? For me, it's 38. 38. And if you look at the application, it's also entitled a reconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was in the minority previously on this issue as well, so. and also to address Chris's comment. So is the question whether it's A, variance, or B, it could be reconstruction, A, and variance, B. So if we're talking about a variance, that the application is not proper before us. Based on our early discussion that when the question wasn't asked for variance. So um, prior to, I think, your time on the board, we've had other applications where people are expanding structures under this um, aspect of, the, of uh, the ordinance. And there technically, I guess, from my perspective in the past has been that there is no aspect of the statute that permits an expansion um, in a non-conforming lot, or with a non-conforming building, I should say. Um, it's just relocation, continuation or reconstruction or replacement. There's no approval for expansion under this, this particular aspect of the ordinance. So they would have to proceed under a different aspect if there is one, which I think is what you're pointing at. Yes. If you look at B1 on page 41, to just to revisit this mess again, <laughs> which no one wants to do because we just did an application previously in right. the way that we've been doing it all along. Which is so why to kind of go back to this now is a little bit nonsensical. I was um, in the minority last time. Because we just decision, granted so. one. <laughs> um, but if you look at B1 enlargement, which is what this technically would be, that section of the ordinance only discusses when the code enforcement officer can issue a permit himself. And so we've looked at the standards under three for when it needs to come to the ZBA. Even though that is technically titled reconstruction or replacement. And we've said here are the standards that apply when we need to issue a variance for enlargement in front of the ZBA. Because the enlargement section doesn't talk about what to do when there's an enlargement that the code enforcement officer can't grant himself. 
So that a variance is a general word, and a specific type of variance would be in reconstruction or however you describe it, just that. That we're looking at. I think it would be an enlargement variance, but our ordinance doesn't really lay it out in a neat and tidy way. So that addresses my earlier query, that because we don't call it a variance, that's fine. We are calling it a type of variance when it's either an enlargement or reconstruction. And the other, just to loop back the other issue bef uh, that was teed up was whether we put a restriction on the, uh, the addition and its use. I wasn't going to challenge its um, moving forward under this aspect of the ordinance, but I am in favor of putting a restriction on its use. And I guess that's my feeling as well since I brought it up in the first place and I think it probably fits nicely with the fact that this is going to have to fall under you know, the reconstruction provision, you know, as far as the basis under which we're granting the variance. So, <laughs> with that said, is there any other, do we have other comments around the application? Matthew, you're just like, just you're pondering, I can see it. So. Um, on page 43, if you look at the last paragraph of three, it points to the variant standards for building reconstruction or replacement. Here's what the ZBA does to determine whether this is a practical difficulty ordinance. And then it points you over to 1944B2, which are the variant standards, which are all that we will look at. But for some reason, the enlargement section of the ordinance does not contain such a directive. So what, we, what I have said historically is clearly this was just a formatting error and they meant for these variance of requirements to apply not just to reconstruction and replacements. It doesn't make any sense. It, impl it applies to enlargements as well. Otherwise, we're saying that you can't do an enlargement unless you can get it from the code enforcement officer. But, but that's a shoreland, uh, that, that section, we're talking about uh, 1944B3 1944 you're talking about? That's a shore land overland, uh, shore yeah, land per overlay district. This is not in shore land this overlay right. district. So it's 1943. It's 1952B1, right? Well, you said page 43. That's we my, different my, my 43 has, my 19, my page 43 is, is 1944 B3, which. All right, well, Ben, remind me where the site is that points you to it for the enlargements. It, it's 1943 B3. Page uh, 3839. Ordinary right. maintenance and repair. Mm. So page 38, the last paragraph of three. Oh my goodness. Chris, if you make me do this again. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was, uh, if I recall correctly, I was on the losing end of this you were. issue, which is why I'm not reopening the entire can of worms and I'll proceed under this because that's what we've done in the past. But I would just note that as the chair noted, I'd be in favor of putting a restriction on its use. But I would note that the first issue on the agenda tonight was technically a variance, and we proceeded accordingly under the criteria for a variance, whereas this time we're looking at um, an application under 1943. So do you point them in which direction to go, whether to apply for a variance or to apply under this convoluted way of doing it? Yes. The convoluted way. Why do you like the convoluted way? <laughs> well, a, a variance is if you're getting closer to the setback than you are now. You, you don't, the, the way I view a variance, if, if you're not getting closer to the setback, you're not becoming more non-conforming, you don't need a variance. But if so, you're increasing the volume of your property that is non-conforming, then you do need a variance and you are increasing your non-conformity. No. I don't think so. 
There's right. certainly case law to that effect. Okay. I'd be interested in seeing it. Uh, if my understanding of increasing nonconformity is you, you have your nonconformity, you're, you're, you're 15 feet from the line. If, if you become less than 15 feet from the line, you're increasing that nonconformity because your nonconformity is that horizontal dimension. You don't have a volume nonconformity. You don't have a height nonconformity. You have a nonconformity that is a horizontal dimension of 15 feet. If that number does not get smaller, you don't need a variance. You're not increasing that nonconformity. Uh, I feel like these fit, even though I completely agree with Chris that it's shoehorned into this section. I believe it's the closest thing we currently have in the zoning ordinance. I have talked to Maureen about working on this section. I've talked to John Wall about working on this section. It is in the cooker. Uh, but currently, I feel these things, if they're not getting closer to the line, they're simply expanding their house in a non-conforming area. I think it fits better in this section than it does a variance. If you all disagree, I will point people differently in the future. Although I would add that our prior decision was that the way that you are recommending people move forward is the way that we've said they should move forward. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, any other del deliberations on this? <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, would somebody like to make a, a motion to um, to approve the addition, or not to approve the addition? I'll move to. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of? Tips, can we have a question and speak with a vote? Of course we can. Uh, with no restrictions? With no restrictions. That's my motion. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is an interesting question for us. Um, are we saying that because there's a variance, there can be no restrictions, but because we're not talking about a variance, there can be restrictions? Is that the technicality here? I think it was the comment was made that uh, restrictions on use are very hard to enforce um, outside of the CEO knocking on people's doors and saying, well, how are you using this? And therefore, we could put it in, but it has no teeth. That's an administrative practical issue. I take that point. Yep. I think what we're also saying is that because our ordinance is poorly drafted and we have to shoehorn it into this section, we think that we should limit the use and make it narrower and essentially penalize the applicant for our own poor ordinance drafting. Indeed. And so the applicant merely could have added the word variance to the application, and they could have had whatever. They would have had an 8 by 10 square that can do whatever there instead of a board. Because it's currently drafted as a use purpose, they're not going to get that benefit. I, I, I personally may have, I mean, I, I wasn't so nuanced between whether it was a variance or a reconstruction proposal when I, when I asked whether we want to put a restriction as to the use of the 8 by 10 addition. I mean, I just can't think that hard. So, um, I mean, from my perspective, um, it, it, you know, I, I guess I don't feel so strongly about it that um, that, that, I, that I'm not comfortable with the motion as presented, but I don't, I'm not making the distinction between is it a variance or, it, is, it, is it an application for a variance or is it an application for a reconstruction? I just, to me it's an addition, you know, it's for, it's for a specific purpose, fine, it's for a specific purpose, let's, let's call it what it is. I mean, we've had other applications that have come before us where we get the plans and you know, we've, we've, we've put as an additional condition that 
uh, not in all cases, but in some cases where we're concerned about height in particular, that thou shalt build, you know, we'll approve this. We're approving this application with that plan, plan, you know, 12-4-G-2013, so, so that there's not, never a, a question as to uh, was it this plan or, or another plan. So we, we have in the past at, at times gotten specific as to as to what the nature of our approval really is, what, what we're approving. So I, I don't feel strongly either way as to whether or not we grant the restriction or not. I'm happy to withdraw my motion and move again. Uh, the, I, I take your point. The, the application stands. Uh, if there's a restriction or a limitation as part of the application, the applicant has waived it because it's written as such. So we cannot expand and give them more benefit to the applicant because we've interpreted uh, a, a different thing this evening or we're having a chat about it. So I'm quite content if there is a restriction or not, <coughs> we're trying to tease out uh, the, the issue so that we can move on to the next thing. Okay, so we have a motion before the board, which I believe was seconded by I Joanna. Seconded by Joanna. Um, all those in favor of the motion as made. Yeah. Any opposed? Okay, so six zero. Seven yes. Join us back. What yeah. Six seven. Will I ever get the math right? <laughs> yes. Ever. <laughs> seven zero. Um, okay, so let's um, uh, let's uh, do the finding of facts. Um, we are not doing that. Okay, so uh, this is a request to remodel and expand a single-family dwelling per section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Um, at map U15, lot 18, 208, Two Lights Road, applicant Wayne A. Brooking. Wayne and Beverly Brooking are the owners of record of the property at map U15, lot 18, at 208, Two Light Road. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property, uh, and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. The proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest extent, to the greatest practical extent. Um, can I have a, uh, we take a vote on this, the, the finding of fact and the additional finding of facts. All those in favor? Any opposed? 7-0. Okay. Um, I have one housekeeping thing we need to go back on. But, um, so the application has been approved. Thank you, Mr. Brooking, for your, um, application in your time tonight. Thank you. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, the CEO thinks it might be a good idea for us to vote or not on the withdrawal of the uh, Gorsh uh, application, which probably is a good idea. So um, uh, I, I guess, could I have a, a motion I, to accept the withdrawal? I, yeah, I, I guess, can I have a motion to accept the withdrawal? So okay, Josh and Joanna, first and second. All those in favor of the withdrawal? Any opposed? That is 7 0. Okay, and I just want to say that, that this zoning board may have set a world record in completing inside of an hour and a half three applications. Three applications. Three applications that could be a new world record. Uh, thank you very much, and see you next month, maybe. Oh, motion to adjourn? <laughs> <We have> to <laughs> adjourn.